Farmers and landowners must be given proper compensation and an independent complaints procedure put in place before the building of the high-speed rail link known as HS2. That's according to a landowner organisation. The CLA says the current system is archaic and means hundreds are living with a threat to their livelihoods as uncertainty continues around the project. Well, the association will give evidence today to the parliamentary committee looking into the HS2 bill. The chief surveyor of the CLA, Andrew Shirley, told me the way compulsory purchase works leaves landowners in a David and Goliath position with HS2. The compulsory purchase legislation has not been reformed in the favour of landowners and businesses. It has been reformed in some way in the HS2 bill to make life easier for HS2 to the detriment of rural businesses. We spoke to many people affected by the plans for HS2, which are still at this stage plans, and obviously they are living in a very uncertain situation. What exactly do you want to see changed? Because you can't change that fundamental uncertainty. No one can't change the uncertainty but you can allow businesses to continue. You can create a system where compensation can be paid promptly, preferably before land is entered because most businesses will have been suffering a loss as a result of HS2 for many years and also a way in which you can appeal through a complaints commissioner for any issues that arise throughout the construction process. At the moment, if a landowner disagreed with the way HS2 was going about purchasing or not purchasing the land, how would they appeal? Essentially, their only option at the moment is to appear before the Parliamentary Bill Committee having already petitioned. It is much more difficult to get any result other than going to judicial review. If you're concerned about the amount of compensation that you have, you would have to then appeal to the upper tribunal, which is an expensive process. And again, you're stuck with the same David and Goliath situation as we had earlier. HS2 have come to you with some suggested compromises. Why isn't that enough? They have offered an agricultural liaison officer. That doesn't go far enough. The important thing is that we have an independent complaints commissioner with an enhanced role. So it goes beyond what HS2 are envisaging and has real teeth to hold HS2 to account and ensure that the impact on businesses is kept to the least extent it can be. You're giving evidence to this committee later today. What do you hope will come out of that? I hope that the committee will listen to what we say. I think what we are putting forward are simple, reasonable and proportionate changes that are relevant to HS2 and will benefit businesses who have suffered a huge impact so far as a result of HS2 and will continue to do so probably for the next decade or two. At the moment what we have is businesses stagnating because of the uncertainty and because HS2 will not engage properly with them to find good solutions to secure their future.